Hey man, he Brian Ben Bilal. Come back at you with another edition of this Boomer's Logic. Um, I just want to address something. I'm out and about um, doing a little grocery shopping, but I wanted to address something that I received in my messenger yesterday regarding the video that I put out yesterday about the 15 year old boy who tore up his mother's house. Now I'm not gonna give names in regard to the person who sent me the message because I don't know how they how they would actually feel with me naming names, but they'll know who I'm speaking of, but I do want to address what they said to me in regard to it. But before I get into that, man, Boomer's Logic, he brought me Malau. If you haven't already, go to the uh, channel, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, etc., etc. You know what to do. I shouldn't have to keep repeating this. If you like what I'm talking about, just jump on. Anyway, so... I received a message yesterday from a young lady who spoke about um who spoke about she has two young sons and she spoke about and, and this is pretty much the sentiment that I get from majority of black women you know that they you know that I got these paws and and my sons respect me and this and this and this yeah um that is you know, to a certain extent, you would want to believe that. And this is a sentiment that, like I said, a lot of black women push and they really want to believe, they want to believe that they have cultivated and developed this young man into a man. And they didn't, you know, uh, they checked all the boxes. You can never check all the boxes because you never know. And I can ask you a thousand questions. You wouldn't be able to answer them in regards to to being a man so you you can't adequately adequately raise a young man into manhood um you might be able to raise a good young man but not raise a man now that's not really the uh thing that i want to address i want to address something else that she put in there in her message in her message she talked about how her father um, told her that she would probably never get married or have a man because she's too strong and these men out here are too weak. Now, let me repeat that because I'm about to go into something. That she's too strong and that these men are out here are too weak. So, I'm going to talk about my daughter Kayla real quick. When I first came home, my daughter Kayla who is a stallion of a woman. She's a big, I mean, she's she's big. Um, she's solid. She's built like me. She gets my genetics. She looks exactly like me. She's my twin. I, I mess with her a lot and call her mini me because everybody's like, man, that, that, literally she's, she fell off my back. Um, and she's uber aggressive. I mean, over the top aggressive. And when I came home, Um, the first thing she told me when I came home was she was married at the time. She was still married and she got divorced from this particular individual. But she told me, and I think at some particular point in time, because he told me the same thing, that she said, I need a man like you. Because I don't I don't play the radio when it comes to my woman. You know what I'm saying? Um I don't take any BS. I don't I don't play a lot of games. I do what I'm supposed to do, and she's supposed to do what she's supposed to do, and that's it. Toe the line. Um, I don't need an argumentative, disruptive spirit in my life. And if that's what you are, get the hell away from me. I'm a grown man. I'm going to pay the bills. I'm going to do exactly what I'm supposed to do. But I don't need for you hovering over me with this negativity. And my daughter caught on to this immediately when I came home. And remember, I spent 13 years in the joint, so uh, all, well, 13 and a half, almost 14 years. And so she had never really had any interaction with me, except for when she was younger. And actually, her ex-husband told me the same thing. Man, I need a, a man like my dad that's going to, you know, he, put his, he puts his foot down, he ain't hearing nothing. Yo, listen, this is what it is. If you want to be around me, this is what it is. I don't get into the argumentative and going back and forth with a woman. That's not, man, listen, I'm not abroad. I'm not about to sit and be arguing back and forth. 
you're gonna do what I tell you to do, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? If you if you see some places where I'm lacking, fill that void and check me in regard to that. Because I'm a man and I'm able to sit and look and say, yeah, she's right, I need to do that better. You dig what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I had to check my daughter on a lot of different occasions about how she used to interact with her ex-husband, how she used to talk to him. Um, I mean, she was so disrespectful. Her, listen, the one thing about you black women, you know about your tongue. And y'all have the sharpest tongues outside of Puerto Rican women. Now, y'all y'all top Puerto Rican women. But Puerto Rican women have some of the sharpest tongues. But y'all black women, man, listen. You leave lacerations and you know what you're doing. And I used to have to tell my daughter, yo, listen, check this out. When I first came home, I used to stay on top of my daughter because I understood she was me. The female version of me. And I used to have to check her continuously. And I used to have to tell her, yo, listen, your mouth, you don't talk to a man like that. And I used to check her. I had to check her a couple times in front of her husband at the time. Yeah, yo, you don't talk to him like that. Because him being young and him being raised by a female, he really didn't, you know, he knew he didn't like how she was talking, but he didn't know how to address it. Me being raised by men, a bunch of men, knew how to address it you know and plus that's my daughter uh but it had got to a point where you know there was a lot of things before i had come home so i had to kind of wash my hands up and not left it alone so she ended up they ended up divorcing but she remarried so when she met this new individual that she's with now i'm a backtrack before she met him she came to me and she had been divorced maybe 18 months, two years, something like that. In about 18 months. Um, and she confided in me and she said, Dad, I'm lonely. She said, I don't like this. You know, what 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 do I have to do? And you know, I had told my daughter, you, you were supposed to be a you were supposed to literally be a dude because of how you think, how you act. You were supposed to be a man, but you're a woman. And she came to me and I, she said, I'm alone. I don't like being alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm lonely. What what do I need to do? I want a man. What do I need to do? I said, the first thing you need to do is, is you need to learn how to submit. You need to learn how to submit. You don't know how to submit. You want to drive. You want to be in the front. You want to be, you know, you want to wear the pants and it don't work like that. Not with a man. You know, you can get a simp or a sucker. He'll let you do all that. But a man, he gonna say, nah, sit your behind down, learn your position, learn your role, and that's it. So she met uh, her husband now, Jawanza. And when she first introduced me to Jawanza, I sat him down and told him, hey man, you ready for this? Because if you're not ready, don't even mess with her. Seriously, because she's strong. She's going to try to dominate you. And if you, if you don't have the ability to break her down, leave her alone. And uh, he said he was ready up. He was, you know, uh, uh, up for the task. Initially, I thought he was failing miserably. I mean, miserably. Miserably. He couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I mean, in my eyes, you know, and, I, and, you know, I told him at one point he didn't have a backbone. And, and they all told me, you shouldn't have did that, Dad. Oh baby, and my wife told me you shouldn't have did this. You shouldn't have said, but he was he was not exhibiting those characteristics traits of a man, and I could see that he was a man, but he was just you know kind of pansying around, and at some point he picked it up. I don't know if that conversation is what you know built him up to that point, but he kicked it up a notch, and you can see her submission. You can see her acquiescing to her position, conforming to who she was supposed to be in the relationship. And uh, let me say this. So, it is. So, when she first brought him over, right, to meet me, she was driving, right? So, I didn't say anything about it. Second time they came over, she was driving. Third time she came over. She was driving, right? 
At that particular time, I addressed it in front of him. I said, Kayla, why is it that every time you come over here, you're driving? She said, Dad, what is I said, when are you going to give your man the wheel? This is just one of those demonstrations of submission, showing that he is an established part of this relationship and he has control. A man drives his woman around. A man don't sit in the drive passenger seat while she drives him around. I, I, I have never seen such pansyism since I've been home with all these young boys sitting in the passenger seat of the car while these women are driving them. This shows the dominance. This shows who is in control of the relationship. I make sure that I take you to where you need to be. I'm going to open your door, put you in the vehicle, and I'm going to get you there safely. Not vice versa. And my, and my daughter asked me, she said, well, dad, how long does he get to drive? I said, until he determines that he wants you to drive. I said, my wife drives me nowhere unless I'm too inebriated or I'm so tired and we're on a trip. And I say, baby, you need to drive for a while. Other than that, she gets straight in the passenger side. I don't do this whole, you know, uh, uh, new age you know, this stuff that y'all got going on. But anyway, I digress on that point. And I'm gonna get to the uh, back to the point. So when this guy told his daughter that these young men are too strong, no, it's because you are a Kayla. You're too argumentative. You wanna be in control. You wanna be in the front. You don't wanna submit. And this is the problem with a lot of you young black women. Your fathers and your mothers are giving you this false impression that uh, men are weak, you are strong. Instead of teaching you, hey, listen, when you get into a relationship, you have to be submissive in order to keep a man. Don't no man want to be with a gorilla, always complaining, argumentative woman. They, they don't. So this is where this young lady lands at because she constantly has this affirmation as if everybody out there is just so weak they can't handle her. No, you're more than likely, nine times out of 10, you're argumentative, you're hard to get along with, and you will not find peace in your position in the relationship because you've all redefined the positions in relationships. Learn how to rattle some pans. Learn how to cook and clean. Learn how to do some of that stuff for when he so when he comes home, he can kick his shoes off after a hard day work and you know you can lend him your ear. And he can pour into you so you can learn who he is more. Instead of all all, all he he's laboring at work all day and he's going through with the boss, and then he has to come home to this garbage, this hot trash where he's going back and forth with the woman that he's supposed to be in a relationship with. Nah. Nah. A, 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 a grown man is going to opt out of that. Now, you can find you a, 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 a yellow belly sniveling um, chump, and, you know, he might, you know, jump on board for that. You know, and weather the ride. You know, hey, man, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah that's straight. Nah, not a grown man. A grown man going to say, hey, man, either you're going to get on board or, man, leave me the hell alone. Hell on away from me, you know. So I just wanted to address that and reaffirm or reconfirm what I said before. You women have to understand, especially you young women, no man wants to be around a bitter, argumentative woman. He wants peace when he comes home. He wants solace. This is what he wants. He doesn't want to be sitting here arguing with you all day about little to nothing. He doesn't want to come home to somebody who got... Uh, uh, a pair of drawers on with, with a dick hole in them. He don't want that. He wants to come home to a sexy, soft, feminine person that he can snuggle up to, that he can lay, you know, his head in her lap. She just, you know, she gonna listen to him because he's been out there trying to conquer or subdue the world. You know, you don't want to come home fighting a fight on this front after he just left uh, another front fighting a fight. That's too much. And I used to have to tell my wife that you're wearing on me. You need to change or get the hell away from me. Simple as that. It don't get no plainer. Change 
or you're never going to find a man. This is it's, it's, it's simple mathematics. One plus one equals what? Two plus two equals what? It's easy. That's how it works. And I just want to pass this along to you young women who think that all these men are too weak. No, you're just argumentative, bitter, and you get on everybody's damn nerves. Probably more than like them. So, um, I'm going to shut this one down. But I got another one that I'm going to shoot for y'all today about fat people. So, I love y'all. Have a good day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.